Welcome to the first ever edition of I Got Five on. I got five. This is where I put up a poll on the community page on my channel, and you guys have four options to choose from that I'm going to make a video on that week. And this week's topic is the five things you need to master school dances. What is up everyone, my name is DJ Rick Webb and this is the five things I think you need to be able to do to master school dances. To be very successful, this is the five things I see in my business that I've been able to replicate and do to be very successful at doing school dances, both the large and the small, here they are. Number one is your music. You need to have all clean music. And not only that, your music library needs to be up to date. And I'm talking not a week, not a week, a month behind or something like that. It needs to be the day of up to date. Along with that, if you want to be successful at school dances, you can't just have full songs. You can't have the original songs. You need to also have short edits. You need to have condensed short edits of songs. You need to find some good remixes, some good bootlegs. You need to also look into having good transition songs that are already made up, mashups that are already made up, things that are not only going to allow you to basically make your transitions a lot better in between songs, but are also going to increase the energy throughout the night. So you're going to be able to basically do the wave of energy throughout the night with the crowd, keep the kids entertained, and also not bore them. Because no one wants to listen to a whole song for five minutes anymore. Two to two minutes is probably your optimal time frame for songs. We'll talk about that in one of these future points. The second point involves programming of your music. You need to be able to anticipate what the hits are that these kids want to listen to. Now, how you come up with these hits are up to you. You can either do like song requests, ask for song requests prior to the event, or just ask some kids and probably just stay up to date on what these kids are listening to nowadays. Now, by knowing these hits, you got to program your sets appropriately so that you don't run out of music and lose the crowd at the end of the night. But there's one thing you need to do at school dances, and that is out of those hits, come up with two or three and play them off the get-go. This will instill trust in the students in you as a DJ, that you know what music they like and that also you know what the heck you're doing. Then throughout the night, those hits, you're gonna wanna sprinkle them in throughout your sets. That way you continue that trust and you also continue playing those hits that are high energy points in the night for these kids. The third point involves mixing. At school dances, you need to be able to beat match and do clean transitions. Now I know you're saying 90% of students don't know the difference between if you're doing fade mixing in and out or if you're doing beat match mixing because they haven't heard the difference. But it is a more enhanced experience for the students if you're doing beat match mixing, clean transitions, and you're blending songs properly. They're going to notice in terms of the experience that they have at the dance. And that is a selling point of why you're a better DJ than the other DJ they had last year. The fourth point involves this guy right here. And that involves hyping up the students and being an MC. To master school dances, you need to be able to use this tool right here to hype the students up but not annoy them. Some of those things include that I like to do are intros basically. So the initial introduction of the dance to the students when there's like a bunch of students in. It's only like 15 minutes to 30 minutes in when the whole crowd is in there. Basically cutting the music, getting on the mic, hyping them up, introducing the dance, introducing you know, who you are and just getting them excited, maybe hollering out where my seniors at, where my freshmen at, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But then throughout the night, you also want to do things like, the, well, these are just things that I do, but like on a bass drop, maybe encourage them to jump on the count of three, put your hands in the air, clap your hands, stuff, stuff that you would do basically in a club type environment. You're going to want to do it for your school dances because I'll, I'll let you know, a school dance nowadays is literally like a club performance. But there's a balance. You need to figure out what that balance really is, but your goal overall is to just enhance the experience that the kids are having, the students that they're having. Because when you do things like having them all jump in the air, make noise, those are moments that they will remember and it makes you stand out as a DJ compared to their last year DJ or whoever the heck else tried to do their school dance and did a terrible job. And point number five, I couldn't do a whole video on school dances without talking about it, is equipment. In terms of sound, you need to have adequate sound equipment for the amount of students that are there. Now, everyone in the face of the earth has their own opinion on what is enough sound for this many kids. Is this enough bass? Is this enough sound? 
So I'm going to give you my interpretation of what is enough sound. First off, every school dance you do requires subwoofers. I don't care what you say. You need subwoofers at your school dance because bass is king. Now to reference the amount of sound I'm going to do, I'm going to reference the speaker categories that I use for my top powered speaker video. If you haven't seen it, I made a video on the intermediate and the pro level speakers that are out there. I also made a video on beginner speakers, but in my eyes, if you're going to master school dances, you should not be using beginner speakers at school dances if you're trying to get to the high level that you need to be at. So if there's about 200 kids at a school dance, two subwoofers and two tops from the intermediate category will do it perfectly fine in my eyes. Above 200 kids up to the 300 range, we could either use four subs from the intermediate range and four tops from the intermediate range or we could use two subs and two tops from our pro end line. When we're talking in the 300 to 500 kid category, that's when we're talking about doing four of our pro end subwoofers, and normally two of the pro end speakers are loud enough on a high pass filter that they can also match the output of those four subwoofers. But a lot of times when I get close to the upper 400 range and above that, that's when I start looking at using dual 18 inch subwoofers, I start looking at using line array speakers, that's when we're really starting to talk about big crowds where you need big, high-end, tour-grade sound to handle the amount of output that I think you need at a school dance. Oh, uh, Now, lighting-wise, lighting in short terms has to have that wow factor for school dances. And if you want to achieve that wow factor, you need to be doing DMXing on your lightings. Full-on DMXing. Because you want to be able to control the energy of the room. You can control the energy with sound, yes. But to overall control the energy of the room, you also need to be able to control your lighting. Being able to switch between, between different scenes of either having beams flying every way throughout the room, having strobes going, having UV lights on, or just having calm fades going. It controls the atmosphere, controls the whole entire environment and experience that the students are going through. And that is why I think you need to have that to master school dances. So that is my five points on things you need to master school dances. Like I said, this is all my opinion on what I think you need. This is from based on my experience in doing school dances over the last six years, doing the big high-end production school dances and also doing the small end school dances and being able to get students every year to want you back as their DJ. Just for a validation on those five points, I'm in North Carolina now. I had the schools that I've been booking for the past three to five years back in Ohio. There's like seven total of them. Mostly all of them reach out to me again this homecoming season and actually a bunch of them are paying the premium price that I'm charging on top of it to travel back to Ohio to do their school dances because the students want me back. They want my company. They want the experience. They want me back. The staff wants me back. The administration wants me back. These five points directly contribute to that. And that wraps up the first I Got Five On It video. Like I said, we're doing polls on my community page. The next poll is literally up right now. It's on the screen right now. Basically, each time we do one of these videos, I'm going to have four topics posted on my community page, and you guys are going to go in there and vote. The one that wins the overall vote is the one that I make the video on. The second and third highest vote stay on the poll for the next week, and we add in two new ones. The fourth, the lowest one, gets dropped off. I thought this would be a cool way to get you guys interactive in choosing the video topics that I make videos on because I have a list on my phone of so many videos that you guys have requested for me to make that it's been really hard to get around to making them. Now the tutorial videos and the stuff where I build stuff like the case build over there, those are still going to be coming but like the topic based videos I wanted to kind of like get you guys involved in choosing those and doing them in this quick five things fashion makes my life a little bit easier because I can make these videos a little bit quicker. So overall, I hope you enjoyed this first video on the I Got Five On It series. If you did, be sure to slap that like button. That way I can continue to make these amazing videos. Also, leave down in the comment section below what you guys thought of this video. Also, if you have any suggestions for five something videos, leave them down in the comments down below and I will add them onto the list of ideas that I already have for future ones. And if you're not already subscribed to this YouTube channel, well, you're missing out. You're missing out on all the awesome videos that I'm trying to put out and do and gig logs and tutorials and concepts that you guys want to see. So you should hit that subscribe button and join the over 17,000 now of you guys people that probably dates this video if you guys are watching at a future point. But 
17,000 plus of you guys at this point, and we're just gonna keep rolling with this train and keep it going. But yeah, guys, my name is DJ Rick Webb. Keep them records spinning, guys, and I will see you guys again with some sort of video. Peace.